come back to Northwest City Politics and then know what's Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us again this week. We're always happy for people like you that are interested in what's happening in our cities. Because it is important for good government that there be a back and forth flow of information between the city councils and the mayor and the staff in the city and with the residents. It really is important for people like you that are wanting to know what's happening in the cities and to keep abreast of it a little bit. If you haven't watched us before, each week we'll have someone on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area bringing us up to date on what's happening in that particular city. And right now we're in the middle of election season. So uh, there are eight of our nine cities that have elections going on and we'll have a number of candidates bringing some of their ideas to help you understand where they're coming from. And we encourage you, if it's your city <coughs> and it's your uh, candidate, take down their name and take down their email and take down their phone numbers. So if we talk about an, if they talk about an issue that concerns you, you know who to contact, and they all would like to hear from you, I'm sure. Now, we're very happy tonight to have, uh, from three different cities, candidates that are running for mayor. Mm -hmm. We've got Tim Wilson, who's currently the mayor at Brooklyn Center, Jeff Washi, who's running for mayor in Plymouth, and PJ Agnes. Agnes Did I yep. Okay, I just want to make sure I I'm really right. impressed, because <laughs> that's happened where people get it right very, very few times in ah. life. And he's from Maple Grove. So we're very happy to have all three of you here. We'll start with Mayor Wilson, and we'll ask you to introduce yourself out to our wider audience. People in Brooklyn Set probably know quite a bit about you, but introduce yourself to the wider audience, and then kind of explain how you got into running for mayor and why you think you'd be good at it. Well, my name's Tim Wilson, and if you ever have to spell it, it's got two L's in right, Wilson. Right. A lot of people remember it that way. Mm -hmm. um, I've been the mayor for the last 12 years. Uh, 12 years prior to that, I was on the planning and zoning, uh -huh. and I've spent eight years on the Charter Commission as uh -huh. well during that period of time. Um, I also served two terms, or eight years, in my hometown of Casota, Minnesota, oh, oh. as a council person as well. So have been very active in politics over the years and have been very, very active in Brooklyn Center right. and the politics that are going on here. Um, when I first was elected, we uh, started a program on redevelopment and uh, we had way too many underutilized properties. Ah. We still have some, mm -hmm. but we've been able to <coughs> entice developers and businesses to come in and invest hundreds of millions of dollars ah. in Brooklyn Center. And uh, we have more coming. Uh -huh. and a lot more coming and uh, it's getting to that point where the proverbial uh, snowball going down the hill is right. growing bigger and bigger and bigger ah. and that redevelopment is really taking off so <clears throat> you may have seen in the press the last couple of weeks uh, top golf came online oh yes I did and, yep and uh, that's a pretty big deal they hired 500 people Ooh. 500 jobs uh, in that facility and uh, if you get a chance go over there it's really a okay. nice nice facility so do you want anything else? No. no. <laughs> then I asked, uh, well, I gave some suggestions. Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. I, not that they had to pick from these, but some of the air issues that they might want to talk about would be the Blue Line extension mm -hmm. that's happening, mm -hmm. economic redevelopment projects, housing projects for the future, maybe special issues that a particular city is facing, what values are important for your city in the future, about tax increment financing, what you think about it, and then maintaining a balance between city services and tax increases. So I asked, gave you some ideas, but yeah. basically I'd ask you to start with an issue that you're kind of sharing or that's concerning you. Do you want us to go out through all of those no, now? No, or that just, whole just pick, long no, no, that's, that was just for you to yeah. think about ahead yeah. of time. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, redevelopment is a very important ah. piece uh, in our city and uh, we need to bring our tax base up because of the underutilized properties. Mm -hmm. And the more we can uh, develop those properties and swing our tax base up, um, strengthens uh, the lowering of taxes for oh, the property right, owners right. as well. And uh, it's been a long, long 12 years to get to where we are now. Um, but we're doing well. 
and moving forward and uh, we have in the pipeline some some really good redevelopments that oh. will happen in the next few years as well um, but there again it's hundreds of millions of dollars that developers are uh, investing in our city and right. we we have investments like new buildings uh, buildings hotels that have been refurbished uh -huh. Uh, apartment complexes that have been refurbished and uh, it's just all across the board. We also see a lot of residential housing uh, where people are really taking care of their housing ah. and uh, it helps a lot for the whole community's image right. across the board. We are a very diverse city. Uh -huh. um, I think there's 42 percent um, white Americans that live in Brooklyn Center. Uh, versus people of uh, some other ethnic background right. of some sort. And um, over the last 10 years, it has changed dramatically right. for the diversity. Um, 10 years ago, we had uh, basically an aging community with a lot of retirees uh -huh. who had <laughs> raised their families. Right. And now that's all turned over uh -huh. to new people, younger people with kids, wow. and a much uh, bigger diversity uh -huh. as well. So. And then another issue that you might want to share with people out there? Well, um, we, um, we finished our budget for this year. Uh -huh. Every year we um, try to do as best we can with the budget. This year it'll be 7.7%, I think is what oh. we finally came up with. And that's kind of in the ballpark right. from year to year. Um, but more importantly, what we've done over the years is we've put a 15-year plan in place for ah. sewer and water and, and uh, water runoff, uh -huh. those things, so that those enterprise systems, we can project out that far. Right. We realize it isn't going to be that in 15 right. <laughs> years, but every year it gets looked at uh -huh. and tweaked a little bit and looked at again so that we're not <laughs> seeing you know, a huge spike in the water oh, bill. Right. Uh, right. one year or two years and we kind of flatten it out mm -hmm. so uh, it isn't that much of a hardship then oh, for the right, homeowners right. and the businesses so yeah and um, we have gone from a um, Moody's and Poor's A rating okay. to a double A rating oh. uh, the last few years and, and a double A for for Moody's and Poor means that when we go to borrow money uh, or bonds, uh, which we do quite a right. bit, you know, in and out, uh, it costs far less uh -huh. in interest. So that's a good move. State right. of Minnesota has a triple A, by oh. the way. And my understanding is the only reason we don't have a triple A is because <clears throat> our local economy is not high enough to support oh. it. Um, things like wages, right. you know, and uh, annual incomes for people uh -huh. that are working. So, but we're working on that too. Something that you're proud of, right? Yep. Yep. Are there any particular issues that you hear from people as you're out campaigning and door knocking? Things that people are particularly interested in? Well, right now there are a couple actually. Uh, there are uh, chickens. There's an ordinance okay. for chickens oh. <laughs> in Brooklyn it has, Center. It has come to Brooklyn Center. <laughs> yeah, it's had its first reading and we're putting that together okay. as well for a second reading here in a couple of weeks or so. Uh, we heard a lot of people that would want to see that happen in Brooklyn Center, and that's fine. We'll, right. we'll put some ordinance around it, and uh, they'll be able to do that. Um, we hear a lot of times from people um, in a neighborhood, it happens to be their year for redevelopment, uh -huh. street work, right. uh, along with sewer and water lines. And um, that program has been a 30-year program. We've tried to keep it as equal uh, as possible for right. each property over the years. And my understanding is in 2021 or 2022, we should have that whole 30 year plan completed. Ah. Well, I'm gonna stop you right here because mm -hmm. I wanna leave you enough time to tell Brooklyn Center people why they should vote for you on November 6th. Well, I think I mentioned earlier, I have a lot of experience uh -huh. uh, with uh, city government right? and uh, have worked very hard at it and have been involved in two different cities as a council uh -huh. person, uh, either the mayor or council person <coughs> itself. Um, I also have been uh, very, very active in uh, state politics uh -huh. and have good working relationships with a number of people who uh -huh. are serving in office now, uh, along with uh, people in Hennepin County, 
uh, where uh, we as a city are working uh, in supporting the blue line, uh -huh. 252 we're supporting. Right. Um, so it's, it's very complex to run a city mm -hmm. and it takes some time for a new mayor to actually understand uh, what that is. Okay, um, I'm going to have to stop you so we can move mm -hmm. along to the <laughs> next, but I would, Sure. I would certainly agree with you, right? I can talk for another couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. You're a politician. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. Now, we'll move on to Jeff Washi, who's running for yeah. mayor of Plymouth. And I'll let you go through the same introduction to our wider audience and to the people in Plymouth. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Juanita. I appreciate mm -hmm. you inviting me onto the program yeah. tonight. Uh, my wife and I have lived in Plymouth for 18 years. Ah. We've, we've raised our family here. Um, we've been involved in the community here. I've had the honor to serve the last seven years on the city council. And so I'm very familiar with oh. the issues, how the city works, uh, what's, what's going on and what we're trying to accomplish at this point in time. Um, I'm also very involved in the community. Huh. You know, I, I had been when my kids were in high school. Right. I was the uh, president of the PTO, uh -huh. PTO there at the high school. Uh, and I'm still on uh, Wayzata School District's mm -hmm. Community Education Advisory Council. So I think it's important that, you know, people in our, our city, they don't just put us into si silos right, of, of, right. of the city <laughs> and the schools right. and their places of worship. For them, it's just all melds together. Right. And so I think it's important when you're involved in the city and a of city official that you're also involved with other parts of the sure. city as well. Sure. And so that's why being involved with the schools to me is so important as well because mm -hmm. people expect safe neighborhoods mm -hmm. and they want good education right. for their kids. And so in addition to that, you know, I've also, I'm also a member of our Plymouth Rotary, ah. um, past president there. Um, I'm also uh, in Suburban Transit Association. Uh -huh. I serve on the Met, or the Transportation Advisory Board of the Met Council. Oh. So they uh, uh, have about a hundred million or so of oh, funds yeah. that they disperse on an annual basis for projects, transportation projects in the Twin Cities. Right. Um, and it's just that level of involvement. I've been on the Minnesota mm -hmm. Chiefs of Police Foundation Board. Oh. Uh, that's because I believe so much in, in supporting our fire and police that I want to actively support them in, in whatever I can do to help help with that. So those are just some of the different community organizations that I'm involved with. Um, in addition just to being on the just being on the <laughs> being on the city council. I wish it was just being on right, the city right. council. Yeah. Keep keeping very busy, right? Staying very which is busy. Good, which is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. And then if you would talk about start out with some issue that you are concerned about and this gets to be part of your campaigning. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, and as, as you go throughout Plymouth, Plymouth is such a large city that issues will vary depending on where people mm -hmm. live. Right. Right. So if you're in the northwest part of the city, they're more concerned with development and with transportation uh, right. because it's, it's growing and expanding and more cars are going onto the roads. And so, you know, we've added, we expanded Vicksburg Lane to four lanes from two lanes. And we've also uh, created Peony Lane up to Lawndale and uh -huh. Maple Grove. And so those are two projects that have been done. Uh -huh. And now we're working with uh, Hennepin County, trying to get County Road 47 upgraded sometime in the near future. Uh -huh. uh, and then last year, we also uh, got 9.7 million approved in state bonding mm -hmm. to redo the Rockford Road Bridge, the County oh, Road 9 right, bridge right. over 494. And so that bridge is our most dangerous intersection, our most dangerous stretch of road. The most accidents happen there uh -huh. because there's no left-hand turn lane. Right. And so we're, we're targeting to have this project done next year, and it'll create that turn lane in each uh -huh. direction. And so it'll vastly improve the traffic flow and reduce and make it a much safer stretch of road oh, there. Oh, definitely. So transportation is very important for this, the city as a whole, uh -huh. but especially in that area. Um, if you go to the east, um, a they want to it's it's redevelopment. They want to know what's uh, going on with Four Seasons uh, Mall. Oh yes, yes. That's been an eyesore, and, and we're hoping at some point a developer. Uh, I know developers have been talking right. to Walmart about right. redeveloping that, I, uh, and I hope something happens soon with that. Oh, your um, whole city does. Yeah, right? the whole city does right, but especially those in the northeast oh, part of, right. of Plymouth. Uh, but other than that, one of the things that really has me is an issue that I'm concerned about is housing. Ah. Because a third of Plymouth's housing is 40, is 40 years or older. And so 
and most of that is on the east side, which was oh. built before the west side right. was built, right? right? And so, for example, you know, someone reached out to me to ask me about this issue because she lives on a cul-de-sac. There are eight homes on the cul-de-sac, and now, and those homes were built in 1971. Uh -huh. Four of those homes now are rental properties. Uh -huh. The lawns aren't mowed well. Right. The yards aren't kept up. Um, it's just it's a different feel when you have people renting there right. than right. people who are home ownership. So I want to have policies that promote people to keep their homes in okay. good condition, that promote home ownership. Home ownership in Plymouth has dropped. In 2000, home ownership was about 80%. Uh -huh. Now it's 68%. Oh. Mm. So in that 18 years, we've had that much drop off right. in home ownership. So I want to make sure it doesn't go any lower because I think when you own your own home, you take pride in that home right. and you keep it up. And we want to make sure that people, especially if they're in moderate or low income, mm -hmm. have the ability to still to the oh, assistance right. from the city to be able to keep their house in good, good shape. Um, the other part of housing that I want to make sure we continue to address is affordable housing, ah. which, is, which is something we've been looking at in Plymouth. Now in Plymouth, um, we're looking at 2030, okay. you know, according to a market study uh, done by Maxfield Research, we need a, roughly a little under 600 more affordable housing units. Ah, that's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot, but we've been at proactively addressing this uh -huh. issue. Uh, so one apartment, uh, new apartment that was just built, we put it in a condition that they had to have some affordable housing ah. as part of that. Beacon brought Cranberry Ridge that uh -huh. we approved. And so we anticipate that project at, at some point moving forward. Plus we know another company is looking at affordable housing. Well, that's roughly 120 units of that 600. Yep. So that gets us 20% of the way there right. and gives us a real good running start at making sure we're gonna hit that number so that we can accommodate people of all income classes, right. have somewhere to be called Plymouth home. So that, to me, that's an important part too. Definitely. The other thing I think that is changing in Plymouth is we have more diversity in Plymouth. Uh -huh. um, if you go to my Twitter page or my website, uh -huh. you'll see the feeds of, I always do a neighbor of the night when I'm uh -huh. out door knocking. Right. And so when I meet somebody unique or they've immigrated from some other uh -huh. part of the world, I'll just do a selfie with them uh -huh. and say they came here from Uganda, from um, Cambodia, from Hungary. From all, you, you're amazed at how many different parts right. of the world people have immigrated to Plymouth from. Uh, and I want to promote that diversity, uh -huh. and I want everybody to get involved. I don't want people, the tendency I think is like when things are going well, mm -hmm. people is like, they, they don't yeah. get as involved. Well, I right. want to encourage people to get uh -huh. involved in the process. Get involved in your government. Create that channel. Right. You know, that's why I've been going out and door knocking on so many homes. There's almost 17,000 <laughs> homes in Plymouth. Right, right. A lot of doors to knock on. Um, okay, now I'm going to stop you there because I want you to have plenty of time to tell the people out in Plymouth why they should vote for you when they go into the voting booth on November 6th. Okay. Um, first of all, you know, obviously I have seven years experience. Mm -hmm. You know, Mayor Slavic has done a great job for our mm -hmm. city and, and I want to make sure we have a smooth transition ah. so the city doesn't miss a beat. In addition, Mayor Slavik has endorsed me. Okay. Uh, and Congressman Jim Ramstead has endorsed oh. me as well. And so I re those are two endorsements I really value and appreciate. Right. Um, but in addition to that, plus all the community involvement, um, you, I really strongly believe Plymouth has been well managed for a long time. I want to make sure it stays well managed uh -huh. in the future. And on top of that, I want to make sure we, we, are, we are careful with our city taxes, mm -hmm. that we, those are taxpayer funds and that we're spending them carefully. But also Plymouth has a certain expectations of our residents in terms of their streets and definitely their parks and trails. That's like right. a crown jewel of Plymouth is how many people enjoy the trail system, the parks we have. Okay, now I'm going to have to stop. I'm mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt, yeah. but I want PJ to have okay. plenty of time to tell us about Maple Grove. But first, tell our audience about yourself and your background in this area and why you're running for mayor. Well, my name is PJ Agnes, and I am running for mayor of Maple Grove. 
I got married in 2011 and moved from Brooklyn Park to Maple Grove oh. with my wife Stacy. Uh -huh. um, we have a four-year-old daughter oh. who was born in Maple Grove. Um, so my relationship with Stacy and my daughter has been my most successful merger, I would say, uh -huh. as of yet. Um, and we absolutely love living in Maple Grove. Um, my dad was a pastor and started two businesses. Ah. So um, from my early teens, I have been involved in things like children's ministry. I was involved in children's ministry for several years, and I've been involved in youth ministry ah. for uh, several years. And I've also got to see how small business operates. Uh -huh. Um, and really kind of see how things work on the ground floor from right. a small businessman who has really had to work to build up a business. Um, and during his lifetime, he built up a very successful business. Uh -huh. um, I also am the founder of Archangel Self-Defense. Oh. I teach self-defense mostly to women and children, uh -huh. um, but not exclusively. And then sometimes I will, you know, assess people's security, uh, things like that. Sure. Um, but I have been involved with martial arts for a really, really mm -hmm. long time in several different styles. I was a mixed martial arts fighter. I've been a corner man, um, and then I was the ring announcer for uh, Valhalla cage fighting, which oh. is, is a little bit different than um, the normal path to politics, I guess. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or, or a lot different. Um, I also work uh, and have worked for an elementary school in a before uh -huh. and after school program and have held several different positions with them since, uh, since 2000. I uh -huh. basically started as an intern when uh -huh. my senior year of high school. Um, and so I work with elementary school kids. Uh -huh. So um, mixed martial arts fighter working with elementary school kids. Uh -huh. And um, then I'm a dad, which is really where I pour a lot of my time and I uh -huh. really think my family is the biggest thing that I can do um, both for my community and for myself, you know. Right. Raising good children is probably, I think, the biggest thing anyone can do yeah, for their right. community. Um, so, yeah, I'm involved in in church activities, um, and I don't go to church in Maple Grove. Um, and then I work for an elementary school. And then I uh, am a father and a husband. Right. And then I teach self-defense just because I really, really like helping people out with right. self-defense and a lot of cool stuff there. Um, I was never really thinking that I was going to get involved in mm -hmm. local politics, but I saw the last mayoral forum uh -huh. where they were talking about switching to a ward system. Oh, right. And no one on the current city council was interested in that. <laughs> and we're a city of estimated 72,000 Right, good people. size. And not having ac adequate representation for those people doesn't make any sense to me. And when I speak to people about this, I mean, they first of all don't know what a ward system right. is, but when I speak to them about it and we talk about it and they start to understand, I've gotten almost universal hmm. approval. 
um, people are really interested in that because with the exception of some of the quicker developing parts of Plymouth, mm -hmm. <laughs> Maple Grove, <laughs> not Plymouth. <laughs> Plymouth is developing too, but we, we're, so. we're trying to keep up with them. Right. We're trying to go head to head with them and uh, we're doing a good job. But uh, most people feel kind of like left out. Most people okay. feel left out of city government and don't know who their representatives are, which is a common problem that mm -hmm. I'm sure that all cities see, but they don't know how to contact their representatives. They don't know what their representatives are doing. And so what I am looking to do is not saying, you know, I am, I, I have some great political ideas and I'm looking to represent you, but I want to provide a path for people to represent themselves. Ah. So I'm running because someone really needs to champion that ward system. Uh -huh. um, and that is my main disagreement with the current mayor who I really like. He's uh -huh. a good guy and a really good mayor. Um, but we do have some disagreements. Sure. And I, of course, think I know, I'm on the right side of those disagreements. Uh -huh. Well, and now, I'm talking to the people out in Maple Grove, tell them why you, they should elect you to their city council um, as mayor. Well, I think that they should elect me, of course, because I am uh, running on that ward system, and I think it's a winning issue um, that people seem to really like. I also want to do more to make the city government transparent to people. I want to see the city government more involved with things like social media, because of course we can all access, you know, the city council meetings and see what the city council is doing. But a lot of people either don't know where to access that or don't take the time to do that. I'm going to stop you there because we're kind of running out of time and I do want to take the time to thank all three of you because we really appreciate taking your time out of your busy schedules and we'll encourage you to watch us next week because we have more candidate shows coming and take the time to be an educated voter on November 6th. Thank you to all of you. Thank, thank you. you.